okay well so this evening uh, uh, lecture will be about the continuation uh, of the um, uh, web development of web application using uh, flask and uh, we'll try to add some uh, interactivity and some backend uh, to our application today um, mainly what we had uh, built uh, together last Thursday was it uh, is a very simple application of a couple of pages uh, that are linked to each other so we learn the basics of creating pages and templates uh, with uh, flask and we started uh, a very rudimentary sort of user interaction uh, namely the possibility of entering a name uh, and uh, being uh, welcomed by this page uh, mm. and uh, and let's try to mm, go forward from this point uh, actually letting the user interact with the system with the web application is uh, quite easy because we just have to define a form of one page an HTML form okay so the HTML language uh, allows you to create uh, forms uh, by using the form tag uh, and inside the form tag uh, you may have different form elements different types uh, of input elements uh, that could be uh, text inputs could, could be checkboxes could be Ra uh, radio buttons which are next week form of buttons uh, could be text areas for longer um, uh, fragments of text uh, it could be buttons it could be uh, drop down menus and so on okay so we, we have uh, many options or <laughs> the most uh, uh, most primitives for creating user interfaces are available in HTML and what happens is that uh, when the user uh, submits a form so clicks on the specific submit button uh, all the data from the form are collected and packed into a sort of a dictionary where all the names of the input elements specified in the in the html are mapped are connected to the actual values of those elements that the user has typed in or selected uh, from the various elements so this uh, <coughs> set of uh, name value pairs is being sent by the browser to the web server encoded uh, in in the in the http request mm -hmm. uh, next time we will dig uh, deeper into the http protocol to understand how and where this data is encoded mm -hmm. and on the other hand on the receiving end okay where the server is receiving a request that contains some form data well first of all usually this request this http request will be encoded in the or will be according to the http post method so most requests are using the http get verb but sending post sending form data is best uh, accomplished by using the post uh, uh, method mm -hmm. that's mainly because uh, all the information in the url is not visible otherwise uh, sending a form with get will uh, write all the information in the address bar of the browser which is not very nice to see what python does in any case is to extract all these name value pairs and put them into a proper uh, python dictionary we already saw that uh, briefly uh, last time where we can extract from the request request is a flask object that contains all the information about the incoming request all the information about the http request one of the attributes of the request object is form form is the dictionary that contains all the form data being submitted in this specific request so we, we could extract uh, the username mickey mouse okay now the problem is okay uh no, we already saw this now the problem is uh, how to remember 
this information because uh, request.form is only valid in the single one the single page that receives the form request okay if i want to go let's make it in practice mickey mice is, is my name i would like to in include the name also here for example or also when you back up uh, when you go back to the home page instead of writing welcome to my project uh, i want to write again welcome mickey mouse how can i do that okay in uh, when i write mickey mouse i'm going to this welcome page i could write a link back to the home page here okay but and so the, it will call again the index page but how can the index page remember the name mickey mouse that was given to the welcome page i mean this information is here in the welcome page the welcome page has just has been called by a form by submitting a form so this data is available it's fresh okay and so i can store it and use it immediately but after that how can i remember for a longer time some information what what you could say is oh but it's easy let's just store it at the application level uh, we define a username permanent variable let's initialize it uh, to a empty string and then we just save it there And so this username, the permanent version of the username would be available in the, even after that because this variable username is local to this function. So the username variable disappears at this return. But the username permanent has been declared outside the functions in the module context. So it's valid for whole duration of the lifetime of the module, means forever. However, this does not work why because a web application is a shared application so you have a single server serving thousands of users every time a user logs in or uh, enters his name this variable which is only one variable for everybody gets overwritten gets changed okay so it's very difficult to keep the state of interaction with a single user when you have many other users that are mangling or writing and modifying the same variables what we want to remember is the name of that user and we want to be able to distinguish the different sessions of different users because each of them each user provides different information and we want to keep track of all of them separately <coughs> unfortunately if we are using some uh, global variable that variable will be shared among all the users hmm? and it will be useless basically so we never store application level context at the application level here because it's not useful it's not it cannot be made specific to the user and uh, what can we do uh, the http protocol in general the web is quite nasty in this respect because by design 
the HTTP protocol is uh, a memoryless protocol. Every time I do a GET request, that request or POST or whatever, that request is processed by the server independently from all the others. So when the server receives this GET index request, by the construction of the HTTP protocol, the server does not know, doesn't have any way of knowing that this request comes from the same user that just issues, issued the post with the name embedded in it. So, in this post, uh, we provide the name. I don't know, uh, 20 seconds later, or even less, we make a GET, but for the, from the server point of view, these two requests, the POST and the GET, are totally unrelated. There is nothing that links the two. There is nothing that tells the server these two are um, the next step of each other. These two are part of a sequence of pages browsed by the same user on the same computer, and it's, it's the same user. And he wants, because HTTP thinks in pages. Pages are disconnected from each other. Users, we, we think in sessions. We open a session, we log in, and then we see and browse a lot of pages inside that session. And while we browse the pages, the website still remembers who we are. Right? So we need a mechanism for the web server to recognize that a given request uh, is related to some other request in the past and the mechanism for sharing information between these requests so that a, a former request in the past uh, could save some information in a user-specific way this is the key that later on another page from the same user could retrieve that information we cannot do that with global variables we saw that we understood why because otherwise they will get mixed between all the users we need some user specific storage of information that can be shared between different pages requested by the same user in different times during the same navigation session so we need to build the so-called uh, session abstraction http doesn't have any notion explicitly of sessions session is something that is constructed artificially on top of the http protocol using cookies what is a cookie a cookie is just a small string of text more or not so small depends on the cases that the server stores into the browser's memory so what happens is that if this one two three five people in the front row here are different browsers accessing the server right so when you request the first page from me i will give you the first page what the page you're requesting and those are cookie a small cookie when well, I write user number one, hmm? the one with the yellow shirt. Okay. And you get the page and you promise me that you will store the cookie. This is the promise. If you man keep this promise, I promise to remember you. Okay. Otherwise, you will be forgotten and you will be treated as any other anonymous user. Then later on, he comes. Uh, makes a, a request to any page I see that this request doesn't have any cookie associated with it so I create a new cookie user number two with the blue shirt and give the cookie to you together with the HTML and so on okay so the first time you visit the website you get a cookie for free hmm? I pick it back the, onto the onto the response your promise is first to remember the cookie and send second to show the cookie back to me every time 
you request another page in the future. So when I see a new request, uh, I see that this request maybe is a cookie attached, user one. So I know that this new request is from the same user that I already saw in the past. I tagged him with user one. And so I might have in my database, for example, some information stored associated to user one. I could store a dictionary with all the information that I need about user one. <coughs> because right now I know that he is user one. Okay, so the existence of sessions, session defined as a, as a sequence of pages that maintain a context uh, and are browsed by the same person using the same browser in the same mm, con continuous set of navigation. This uh, abstraction of session is based on the exchange of cookies between the server and the browser. And this mechanism works uh, as long as the cookies can be stored by the browsers but cannot be modified by the browsers. You know, what happens if somebody from the back row, a bad guy, uh, will send me a request uh, with a cookie that he generated in the seller with user one as a cookie content? Then that bad guy could access his data. Because as a server, I, <laughs> I trust this information. So the important part is that the cookies oh I, I cannot prevent anyone uh, from creating inventing a cookie of course it's just a string of text so if you reply with a cookie that has been modified I can do I can tell it apart from another one so I need to generate cookies that are not that are impossible to guess you cannot guess which cookie I gave to him it won't be user one it will be one, three, seven, eight uh, exclamation mark uh, and so and something else that you will never be able to guess. So you will never be able to hijack the session. It's a special name kind of attack which is called session hijacking. So I hijack a session of another person, I continue it in its place. Like I hijack in planes, you hijack web sessions. And, uh, and so uh, there are some you know, care to be taken to maintain this uh, mutual trust of browsers and servers and also even the, the single user should not be able to modify his own cookie because maybe that inside the cookie I wrote that the session is valid that the password is correct or the password is expired or some information that that information that I server wrote and I expect to be to receive it back intact without modifications if you try to modify it, I should be able to detect it. So usually these cookies are signed or randomized in some way so that the server can recognize a forged cookie or an invalid cookie and throw it away. Okay, you try to modify my cookie, I log you out. I treat you as an anonymous user, an anonymous user, and if you want, you need to log back in. Log in again a second time. So. This is a, a basic mechanism that every application server in any language in this world must implement in some way. Cookies is something that is uh, defined at the HTTP level, but it's a very basic mechanism. On top of the cookies, you should uh, create some sort of storage mechanism, some sort of synchronization, some sort of expiration mechanism, and so on. And this is the role of the application server. So, uh, for example, in PHP, there is a global variable called the dollar session. In, uh, in Java, you have a, a session context, so you can define session beans that are objects that are stored in the, in the session and so on. In Flask, um, you have an extension or called session <coughs> where you can store some pieces of information into that cookie so if you want to remember something about the user store it into the session what flask actually does is to take your information and pack it 
into the cookie text that is being sent so you are storing your information in the user's browsers uh, you're like the person that had 50 euros but it was afraid of uh, losing them so he kept them safe in another person's pockets hmm? it's uh, a bit risky because <laughs> you are trusting somebody else to keep safe something that is interesting to you hmm? but this is the mechanism that we have um, flask does a very simple thing just pack all the information into the cookie this means uh, we see in a moment uh, that the, these cookies will grow large if you are trying to store a lot of information into the session so don't there are some so more sophisticated mechanisms even in flask uh, where you store in the cookie just uh, an id and their actual data is being stored uh, at the server side inside the database and so it's even safer and you don't need to transfer back and forth a lot of data hmm? but it can be done with a, with some extensions uh, um, we don't need to look at it now so if we use uh, the sessions we need uh, or we are provided with a global variable called session it's another flask object uh, like the request object session is another object provided by flask that is actually a dictionary that appears to be global but in reality there is one different session dictionary for each different user so every user can only access the values of the session dictionary of of himself not the values from other users so there is no explicit user parameter or session parameter hmm? and uh, this uh, cookie is uh, protected by signing it uh, so the server will sign with a cryptographic signature the content of the cookie with a secret key that only the server knows if you publish the secret key somewhere then everybody can hijack or steal your sessions and your data so this secret key is an encryption key that the server should know you define it somewhere into the application server and then it will be used uh, to create the sessions so going back to our examples how can we exploit this mechanism well first of all we can remember the username from his login let's call it login it's not a real login because we don't have a password yet but we can re remember the username by storing it into the session and then we could modify this page here because if we if you already provided your name you don't need, you shouldn't be able to provide it again or to enter it a second time until you log out right so first of all let's store the name when we have it so mickey mouse is recognized here in the welcome page we go to welcome and we don't store the username into this impossible permanent storage we store it into the session dictionary with the key username in this way it's stored separately for every user because it, in reality it's stored into the user browsers for this to work we need of course to import also the session <coughs> variable and so it won't be read and to define at the application level a secret key otherwise uh, flask will refuse to generate cookies which may be anything just a string okay at this point this uh, session object is automatically managed by 
flask we can see it let's uh, restart the application and uh, try to navigate uh, with the inspector active our website in uh, uh, the index so okay we are getting the index page it's nothing strange and we enter the mickey mouse so we see what happens on the browser side okay login so in this page we have a post that sent uh, if we look at the request uh, contains the request parameters are the username mickey mouse so this is the dictionary of, of form data that the browser sent to the server the server of course uh, responded with the html page uh, this one but at the same time the server also generated a cookie response cookie so, the, so this cookie came back with the response from the server path slash means it applies to the whole site and this is the content of this cookie so you cannot read it because it's encrypted with the secret key that we are uh, that we just uh, defined but flask will be able to decrypt it because it knows uh, the key okay and when we click on another link uh, on the same page for example we go back to the index uh, we still haven't modified the index in any way but in the request uh, we have now request cookies so the new request is just a get index nothing special but now is joined to every new request we will join a copy of this of the cookie the most recent copy of the, the cookie so the server can decrypt this cookie and uh, populate the session dictionary for us and we can use the content of the session dictionary and every time we modify the session dictionary the server will send an updated cookie with the fresh values for the variables stored in the session object so what can we do now well in the index page we can check whether the username is defined or not we can extract the username from the session with key username and we decide what to do based on the content of that username maybe we can pass it uh, to the template and so the template can modify the content of the, the messages in the case where the user is not known versus the case in which the user is known so we this is the index template welcome to my project and uh, we can add the name of the user here welcome to my project in general or welcome to my project mickey mouse and all this form should only appear if the username is not defined so we should use uh, an if uh, statement where all this form is only generated if the name is empty So we are making the template more dynamic. It will adapt some, to some conditions, to some information about the session. 
otherwise we could maybe if we don't have the form we may have an else uh, block uh, when we generate uh, uh, maybe the logout action we still don't have a link for that but if you are logged in and you want to log out, uh, the logout button or link only appears if you are logged in. And the login form only appears if you are not logged in. So they are mutually excluded. So let's test this. Uh, let's close this one. Start again. Let me restart the application. Okay. So right now, you see that welcome to my project, Mickey Mouse, he still remembers the previous cookie. Hmm? If I want to reset it, one, one possibility is to clear the cookies here on the, in the browser side. The other possibility is uh, to change the, the encryption key. So the previous cookies will, will all become invalid. So we change the application key, sorry, we rerun the application. Uh, what is this? Yes, of course. I try to use a variable that is not defined. Where? Yeah. Session username in this case is not defined here. So when I try to access the dictionary with a non existent key, I get uh, an exception from the language. So I need to check first. There is one. We should check if uh, is defined username, then get it. Other, otherwise, there is a get syntax. Right? with the key and the default value if I'm not wrong sometimes I may be confused because I'm teaching Java in the morning and Python in the afternoon so bear with me and uh, <laughs> but if I'm not wrong uh, the dictionaries have a get method to where you can specify the key and the default value to be used if the key is not found So here we have the page that is generated when you have no cookie or no username. If you enter your name and log in, the name will be saved into the cookie. And so if you go back to the index, we still have to add uh, a link. Now the page, in this case the template, but in general the application, you can do whatever you want with this information changes the content of the page uh, uses that to customize uh, the login form and uh, whatever okay so you have you have, you have one let's say flag <laughs> which is uh, the session username value that can be populated or not if it's not populated then the, the you have an anonymous user if it's populated then you have a recognized user and you can check this flag everywhere you can also maybe store some some boolean value into the session session valid true or false to make it easier for you hmm? so how uh, how can we log out for example for logging out, we just need to define a new route. Oops. We 
where we just delete the cookie no, we are removing a value from the dictionary or making it null is more or less the same and then we can redirect uh, to the login page and even this welcome page is more or less useless now that we know sessions the welcome page uh, can just store the form information initialize the session and then no, this welcome page is practically useless we can just redirect back uh, back onto the index page okay so we could just so there are sort of service pages that don't show anything but do something behind update the session and then redirect back to some page that is showing information so we reload and see what happens uh, no sorry the logout should be linked uh, should be a link so we need to modify index so that this logout uh, should be a link to URL for logout action. Okay, so now logout is a link, goes to slash logout. That of course gives us an error because not everything can be right. Uh, where is my fine exception okay i get it but where have come plus 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 could you bid your for endpoint login do you mean log out uh what page i was trying to execute was uh, in the index for for logi logout right ah, okay sorry this was the mistake here it's not login but index right Let's try again. <laughs> okay, logout. Logout deletes the session, so my name disappears from there on the top, and the uh, login form is published again. I enter a name, I login, I get my welcome there, and the logout button, and so on. Hmm? So this is the basic, the first step in entering and exiting a session. When the session, session is active, then you can store additional data and let the user access internal pages and so on. In many pages, many internal pages, the first thing you need to check is whether the session is defined, is valid. Otherwise, redirect the user outside to an error page. You are not logged in. You cannot access this page. OK. This is very uh, simple because uh, any user can just enter into the website. There is no control uh, over the usernames. What if we wanted to add some control? So to check whether the user is actually valid in the system. We need, of course, to check it on the database. 
so we need uh, to work on the welcome page that now will become a sort of a login page really and uh, after we get the username from the form and before we trust it and store it into the session we must check with the database whether the user exists this means that we must have a database first of all where we store names uh, and maybe passwords and, and maybe other user, user data and we, we must uh, from the methods handling uh, the web pages we must access the database make a query in real time okay but you are just coming from a database uh, lab so this is uh, easy for you i will create a new python file um, let's call it user database i will i prefer to store all the database related uh, activity actions and queries and so on in a separate file in a separate module huh? let's not mix it with the logic of the website otherwise it will be become unmanageable very soon and in this module we want to provide a function that uh, may check the user that returns uh, true or false depending what read uh, okay the tools is that returns true or false depending on the on whether the username has been found in the database or not hmm? then we can we'll add passwords and whatever you want but we start simple so how to do that well we can we need to create a, a database with at least one table with at least some data and then query that data so i need to i create a new my secret data source here uh, i need first to create a database so first of all i connect without specifying the database because i want to create one so root uh, my password so this is my connection when i can create a new there's not a new schema a new schema schema is the sql name for a new database a new schema called uh, wake kill was the name of the application okay so now i can forget about this connection and only and i create a new data source here in pycharm with the that is only limited to this wake kill uh, uh, context so i won't uh, may, I, do, I won't see in this case i'm using the same credentials but it should probably define a specific user for working with this database yeah okay so right now we have this database where i can create some tables so new table table users for example and this table has some column maybe an ad which is an integer we will use it a primary key and auto incrementing then uh, we may have the username which is a string maybe 50 characters maximum not null must be unique so we should not 
it's not a primary key but we, want, we don't want to have uh, repeated usernames and uh, later on we may add the password maybe and maybe a full name who knows and so with this uh, interface uh, we are editing the SQL uh, instruction for creating this table and when I execute it you see that we have uh, under the Wakefield schema the users table with the column that we define ID, username, password, full name and so on then we want to try populating this table with some example usernames so if you double click on that you have a, a query window when you can add new data for example I may have a, a username Fulvio right now the password and the full name are not used and the second Mickey Mickey Mouse maybe we can populate the full name maybe we can use it with this data right now I only edit this data in PyCharms if I want to store that in the database in the database yeah, I have this tiny button which is easy to forget uh, submit to the database go and now the data is there so we just need to implement a method that queries this table and tells me whether the username entered by the user is valid according to this username column in the database okay so we can do that here in the user DB uh, to access the database I need to import the PyMySQL library and we define the query that we want to run we want to check whether select uh, all data from users not uh, from users where the where the username is uh, is is this variable but we never should concatenate or inject the string we always should use a parameter query a, a parameterized query per, the percent, percent s so this is the query that we are trying to execute into a connection and then we have all the sequence of statements that we need to do a connection to the database every time we need to, to execute this query we need to create a connection by mysql dot connect and the connection string uh, needs uh, the username the password the database that is wake kill and uh, finally the host all the connection parameters for opening a connection from the connection you create a cursor And from the cursor you execute the query uh, 
execute takes two arguments the first one is the query template and the second one is a, a tuple with all the parameters to be substituted for the percent s signs so the, the query and the tuple with the only username remember if since we have a tuple with only one element uh, remember to put the comma otherwise it will be interpreted just as a scalar value and you get an error or you write tuple as, and uh, to make to be explicit but it's easier like this so in this case it will substitute this parameter in this place if there is a second parameter then the second element of the tuple will be substituted in the second placeholder and so on now we know that this query is selecting on a column username that is a unique column we define that as with a unique constraint this means that there's a guarantee from the database that the results is either zero rows or one row no other possibility it's a unique field i'm filtering on a unique field and so i don't need to fetch all the data i just need to fetch one because there won't be a second in any case maybe there, there is, there's not even the first hmm? so i can have the result by quitting the cursor and fetching just one result and I know that there will be one result or no result if there is one result uh, this result is uh, the full data about that user otherwise this is null this is none so I can return not just true but the result so this function will return none nothing if there is no such user otherwise if there is a user with that name will provide me all the known data about the user just remember always to close the connection otherwise the database after a, a bit of running will start dropping connection will not accept any new connection so you start getting errors because you have a lot of pending connections that have been opened and never closed they will time out eventually after 20 or 30 minutes but you need to close them right now there's a limit on the number of open connection on the mysql side okay does it work don't know let's try it let's try it locally before <laughs> before joining it or plugging it into the website let's write a very stupid main that does a couple of checks okay if uh, name uh, is uh, main oh i hate this syntax then we try to print uh, the name the function was called check user first we try with a, a valid user fulvio and then we try with a non-valid user or, no, or the second one mickey and finally a bad user bad guy hmm? so i expect to see on the console well first of all probably an exception something that is bad that is to be corrected to be debugged but after we debug it I expect to see all the data about Fulvio, all the data about Mickey, and none. No data. Let's try. No, there are no exceptions, sorry. And uh, we see that the first print was ID, username, password, full name for the first and the second user and then none for no user mesh so in, in a way what we are doing is uh, to 
encapsulate isolate all the dirty database operations remember databases are dirty they stink they have a lot of issues there are they have a connection error they have sql syntax they have so let's try to isolate them into a nice interface which just gets a string and returns an object this is a, a top a tuple because you see this the round parentheses here so the um, fetch one returns a tuple corresponding to that line the only critical point is the order of the elements in, in this tuple which is dependent on the order of the columns uh, in the database so to be a bit more robust uh, it's always better to list explicitly the name of the columns that you want because then you will get the tuples with the elements in the same order hmm? so it's a bit more work but we just list id username password full name so nothing changes here but if you want a different set of columns or these columns in a different order then you have it's under your control the asterisk is just uh, no, too free for the database or if a, a, a user adds a new column at the beginning or in the middle then all your tuples will be skewed away or will have too many elements or too few elements hmm? so always regard the asterisk as a warning okay but after that we have uh, a function that can be called from our website because now we know it works so from our application we need to import the user database module and remember what we wanted to do we wanted to check the username before letting him access in the session so at this point we user data is from user db dot check user username We call the check function with this provided username and that will me it will return me the full data for that user and if user data is none then i have a problem so i can redirect uh, to an error page for example or, or, may, or maybe even just uh, render template render template um, error logging error dot html otherwise we can store the information in the session we can store each individual information piece of information or so like session full name is user data full name no uh it's, it's the tuple sorry so it's uh, zero one two three and even the username i pick it from the database because of maybe capitalization issues lowercase uppercase and so on i use the data clean from the database So 
so just a logging error we just need create a, we need to create a very simple template with uh, only one message and then go back to the login page index url4 index just an error template huh? so let's test this run the database the, the no so not here run the Flask example it uh, where is the where are you up run enter name if I enter a wrong name it doesn't work good why uh, so let's stop the project Ah, okay right sorry I, I forgot it was there so it was the previous version okay so okay this name is invalid and if I write my real username welcome to the project okay and if I log out I am deleting some from the key set the key information from the session and then there to start with from the beginning okay and this is just the beginning of course hmm? then we have all the information about the user right now we are not asking for a password for the sake of speed but we could uh, maybe define the wake up times for the user so right now we have uh, i can recognize the user and follow his action through the in interface and uh, i also have a database backend where it can persist uh, store in a persistent way information about the user so for example what we could do is to create a second table with the wake up hours so at what time do you do you want uh, the alarm to be set even maybe more than once an arbitrary number of uh, alarms so an alarms table with a first column which is of course the id of the alarm primary key and then i should tell who is the alarm for so who is the user requesting this alarm because I don't want to ring an alarm at a time for a user at a time requested by a different user so every wake up time should be mapped to a specific user so we need the, the user ID of the user who requested that mandatory not null and the time minimum okay the hour which is of type uh, time not null so is a table where we list all the alarms for every user
like that so and we I want to add if there is a way of to add sorry to add a, a foreign key constraint yes so okay modify table i want to add a foreign key constraint saying that the user id from the alarms table must reference to a, a valid user in the users table right i cannot have a number so we need, i don't need a foreign key where the column where is that okay the target table is users now oh, where is this columns is uh, a foreign key user id references users id so i create a foreign key that the user id local column should reference uh, the column id in table users and i cannot update or delete elements uh, if this rule is violated so the restricts means this it's impossible to insert or the um insert uh, an alarm for a user id that doesn't exist uh, and it's impossible it will be impossible to delete a user when an alarm exists for that user this is the enforcement that primary keys provide okay so you see that this is a with the blue key means it's not a primary key for this table but it's a And probably you can also see that visually where the alarm uh, table reference references the user's table okay and just for imagine ID one sorry the ID is just uh, automatic the user ID one which is me we may have an alarm at eight And another one, always user one, another alarm at 6.30. While user, sorry, user ID one, user one. User ID two is an alarm at 10 in the morning because Mickey Mouse doesn't have to go to work. yes i forgot that so i need to modify table columns uh, auto increment okay and then you go okay okay so right now we have some information about each user so in the in our website uh, why that when the user login we can maybe delete this ugly rooster and show a nice table with the alarm that is already set with maybe some actions like delete uh, or add the new alarm right now we i just populated database with something raw to be able to show to show it but so how can we do that again we start from the database we need to create a function into the user db that will tell me all the um, alarms for a given user but right now we have the templates it will be very easy so a function uh, all alarms for a username uh, okay let's copy and paste and modify the query will, di will, will be different of course 
oops, sorry. I only want the ID, the alarm ID. I don't need the user ID because I already know it, because it's the current user. And uh, uh, I need the, the hour. From alarms, where the user ID is the number I want to. So this reminds me that I didn't store the user ID into the session. I should have also stored in the session not just the username and the full name, but also the user ID. first one right probably yeah uh, sorry lost uh, yeah so now I have this user ID into the session in this user DB maybe it's better to use the user ID otherwise I need to make a join with the, the other table to to but it's not but in numbers are quicker hmm? now we connect again with the same connection string get the cursor execute the query with the only parameter is id and then we can re retrieve all the results uh, and then return them so at this point the caller will get a list of tuples Again, let me debug it before I, inc I include that into the web application. Print uh, all alarms of user number one. Ah, uh, it's running the, it's always running the wrong one. Close here, close there, user DB. Okay, you see that this is the first alarm and this is the second one. This number is actually the, num the, the time of the day measured in seconds or milliseconds, something like that. Hmm? So, if we include this in the application, it means that in the login page index, once we get the username from the session, we know whether the username is logged in or not, is uh, valid or not, is whether we have a valid session or not. If we have a valid session, we can get uh, the list uh, of, uh, um, of alarms so if username sorry for the parenthesis username is not null none then we can get uh, all the alarms from user db dot all alarms from the given user id session user id as okay alarms is now for example as so we can pass to the render template, uh, of course, the username, but also the alarms uh, list. Hmm? I, this alarms equal to none is just to avoid uh, an error here because the, the variable would not be defined otherwise. 
and in the template uh, the index template uh, where we add the rooster picture we only do that if the name is not defined so we if again if the name is not is empty show the rooster as as show a table with the alarms right now we need to to loop over the elements of the alarm maybe show just a, a ballot a ballot list and not a, a table because it's quicker so maybe a list with many items one for every alarm for doing that in a template you can always use a for for variable in collection so our collection is alarms and uh, in each alarm is a let's call it a single alarm and we can include uh, a list item sorry with uh, the a dot uh, the, um, zero is the id one should be the, the time so alarms is a list uh, of tuples every element of that list uh, we have it here as a the field uh, zero the first one is the id of the alarm we don't need it the second is the time of the alarm no, index one so a1 and this part of html is repeated into the four as many times as many alarms we have defined so let's check it of course key error user id where is that in processing index user underscore id user underscore id uh, let me maybe remember the session for the first time no it's even worse <laughs> okay stupid me the, the default value when there is no username is not none but empty string string okay good we are lucky at 532 we, <laughs> we debugged it okay so next next week in the lab you will have to do a similar work uh, with your to-do application where you have already the primitives for uh, adding querying tasks in the database now we create a front a web front end for that okay bye-bye